New York. He has a tool called Augie. We've been using the tool pretty extensively at Future Proof Creatives to experiment and to make voiceover animated videos and animations um, on the fly. And so, and I want to also say that Jeremy's a longtime friend of mine. We also know each uh, Jody. I know Jeremy through Sarah Pullman, which is pretty interesting. Um, uh, Anyway, Jeremy, you take it from here. I just, you know, I just I guess wanted to say, um, Jeremy also supports us financially, this organization. He helps me um, train other people, share information about his tools, experiment and give him feedback. And so he was like one of the first people before the, I even started this company to um, say, I support you guys. And so thanks, Jeremy, and um, whatever we can do to support you as well. Thanks, bud. I think, I think it's what, like year 18 or something like that? Let, let's put it this way. I, I had almost as much hair as Chris did back then and none of it was gray. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been a bit. Um, in the portrait photography industry, we call it silver for the record, not gray. Uh-huh. So um, I'm going to call it gray. Uh, no, I'm just messing. Um, uh, so yeah, I've been basically in the field of, of the convergence of media and technology basically my entire career. Uh, I was at companies like Sling Media, if anyone remembers the Sling Box from a ways back. Uh, I was um, I helped launch a few startups like Sonos and Voodoo and Waze. Uh, I had a few more startups since then, and then I had kids, so I did some big company time at uh, companies like CBS and Warner Media. And a couple of years ago. Um, you know, during the pandemic, a very good friend of mine and I started a podcast together. And, you know, pandemic, you either had to break, make bread or, or start a podcast. Like there was the law, remember? And uh, and so we did this podcast. It was just for fun. It was just talking about movies. And one of the things I'd read was this tip that was like, you know, you should make a little video trailer for your podcast. Because the truth is, everybody finds podcasts now on YouTube. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, I had Creative Suite. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make myself a, a trailer. I swear to you, I did like 40 hours of self-paced tutorials trying to learn how to use Premiere Pro because it's a gorgeous, gorgeous tool. But as has been made clear to me, that's like me learning how to fly a helicopter to go get milk at the corner store, mm -hmm. right? I, it's, it's so much more powerful than what I need. Um, and, I, and my hat's off to all of you who know how to use it. Uh, but from that experience, it made me think that there's got to be something a little easier for us to all use, especially considering how much of content that we create isn't actually the essence of the audience's desire. What I mean by that is the difference between a movie trailer and a movie, right? The movie trailer, as much as they may entertain us and people like me go gobble them up, but, um, but realistically, the purpose of a trailer is to watch a movie, not to watch a trailer, right? And we can get really basic with like the purpose of an ad is to sell a product or things like that. But it got me into thinking like, how can we unlock people from being able to create, whether it's promotional content, storytelling content, narrative content, whatever it might be, where it doesn't have to be up here, everything, right? Um, and along the same way, while talking to a bunch of people who were video adept, one of the things they kept saying is, you know, we spend so much of our time just getting the basics of things together, putting this clip here and that clip here and adjusting the timeline. And so we built this product called Augie, and we've been saying the phrase that we turn your words into video. And what we built is, and, and the very first idea that I said to my co-founder was, I want to just do a thing where I just talk and whatever the words I say, you just find me cool memes or stuff. Like that was literally how this all started. And uh, from there, we went on and built a partnership with Getty Images to get access to their premium catalog but in a way that would be affordable for a lot more people. Um, all right, Chris, you want me to show, you want me to stop talking, show a little demo? No, no, no. I'm just saying you uh, okay. control, just letting you know. All right. All right. <laughs> Happy to. Um, um, so we built a partnership with Getty that lets us use Getty stock content in our product, but in an affordable price point for normal people, right? So the same clips that would cost you 150 to $800 for like 10 seconds of like, man swinging tennis racket uh we put into our product that basically a, a 40 a month all you can eat kind of package it's actually and kind so, of the pro tip here is if you want access to getty's videos and you don't want to pay for it sign up for augie for 40 bucks a month to get access to getty's video library i have no comment on that remark um you're paying 40 dollars a month for a wonderful product experience and whatever <laughs> else you might get along with it <laughs> 
Um, um, so what, what our vision though is, is that any kind of creator, whether that's literally an advertiser doing pure commercial stuff, all the way to someone like Chris, who's super creative and inventive. And I mean, you all get his emails and it's just like, oh my gosh, right? And we wanted that you don't have to go learn all the crazy tools just to put those kind of content together. Uh, and so uh, we started the company about two and a bit years ago before all of the LLM and generative AI stuff really hit the mainstream. Since it showed up, though, it just opened up a world of new possibilities. So we integrated 11 labs, which I'm sure many of you played with. So that's AI voices. We have a couple of hundred AI voices built into the product. Uh, we've integrated uh, chat. Yeah. Maybe not everyone has heard of 11 labs. It's a tool oh. by reading scripts into and recording your voice. You can make a voice clone. Once you have a voice clone, you can essentially generate text files in GPT and then it'll create mp3s of you speaking that in your own voice and so we'll, we'll show some of that later but that's what he's talking about 11 labs you should all check it out everyone should build a voice you know what i'm just gonna go into a demo let's 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 stop talking about what we're talking we'll have a little bit of fun um and uh oh there we go Cheers. um robert also maybe you would prep for us one of the future proof creatives augie's to show in a second yeah I can. so this is our dashboard uh, if you saw it in, uh, in, in the discord or on LinkedIn, we've recently launched a new feature we call storyteller. Storyteller is basically the fun side of Augie, whereas what we call our classic is more the business side. Um, we should call it like, it's our mullet feature work up front, party in the back. Yeah. What do you guys think about that? Um, so I'm just going to make two quick demos. So the first one we're going to do a storyteller video. I would love for anybody, we can use a chat or whatever, or Chris, you can, you can be in charge. I'd love for, 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 uh, someone to give me a little idea of, an, of a, let's make something up right now. Um, Chris, you're creative. You want to give me something? Or uh, something pick, about, pick. um, uh, surfing, surfing in Oahu. And then Jody can take it from there. All right, Jody, we're going to go surfing, but we're going to go something, so surfing somewhere completely unused. Like how about surfing? on a lava flow in Mars, on Mars. Sure, and can it be geckos surfing? Geckos surfing Perfect. lava flows on Mars. By the way, I'm also gonna say this is AI land. So as of the moment I start going from here, who knows what happens. <laughs> um, we do a lot of prompt work to try to get a real story out. So there's actually a lot of uh, uh, um, prompting to really try to get it to be, um, to sound more natural, right? Like if you think about most ChatGPT content kind of sounds the same, right? And even we're still victim of it. You'll get a lot of inner worlds in our product. Uh, we're always working on that. Go ahead, Chris. Oh, I was just gonna say, I take issue every time someone says all GPT content sounds the same. The only people that say that are people that have only scratched the surface of it. They've used just the standard thing. They put in a few words and then some stuff comes out and that all sounds the same. But anytime I'm using it for writing, I, it's, it's highly customizable. Me and Robert and our friend Kayam are having an ongoing contest with who can make writing bots that sound the least like AI. And Kayam's got one that can pass. He's got it to 3% detectability. It can only detect 3% of ChatGPT's voice in Kayam's writing. So anyway, keep Amazing. going. I mean, no worries. Um, but I, I think building on your point, though, Chris, is that's what we have under the hood as well. We don't want all your stories to sound the same. We don't want we we now granted, we actually really want you to come and adjust and tweak and make your own thing. But uh, in the meantime, let's just keep moving through here. So these are voices powered by AI. Including Hi, I'm Hannah, and I'll be the voice of your Augie today. Hi, I'm Grace, and I'll be the voice of your Augie today. Cool. Hi, I'm Gerald, and I'll be the voice of your Augie today. So these are all AI voices. And to Chris's point, I'll show you how to do it in a second. You can also just clone your own. We're adding little tips as we start figuring out how to sort of help the user through picking voices better. Hi, I'm Amy, and I'll be the voice of your Augie today. So let's just go with Amy. And now the next thing we're gonna do is pick a style. So we've, you know, same, same argument Chris was just making. We've taken the time to predefine about 137 unique styles. And they go everything from like claymation, watercolor, uh, photographic, Pokemon, etc. I will also make something very clear. There's not a single prompt, our entire vernacular that uses copyrighted prompt style. So anything that you see, including one here that says Mario World is because specifically there has already been a release of trademark style restrictions on what can be done. 
We believe strongly that the burden of protecting creators is on the person who does the prompt, as yeah. well as industry stuff too. I want to not make anything clear, but um, we there's nothing that happens in here that is built on top of any of those models. So um, that said, I'm going to pick a style. There's um, actually I, I got to say these uh, these these funky ones are always my favorite. So I'm going to do fairy tale, and I'm going to hit. Um, Oh my God, I have to, I have to give myself a credit. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, give me just two seconds here. I That's all right. Um, Robert, would you run that Augie while he's doing that? Yes. Sorry. Uh, no problem. It's all here. good. I actually just so. Do you uh, have it? Yeah, it's already done. Okay. And we're going to continue where we were, and let's go. Uh, it is uh, just so you also know we uh, we charge for this, but we are literally charging the cost of the rendering. So um, because this is a design, is sort of a fun feature. You know, our goal as a business is to make our money off large company, and we're basically mid market and enterprise and then have the product available for use for individual creators. We're actually free for nonprofits and educational institutions. So really trying to leverage leverage the big guys so that we can empower the small guys as we go. Mm -hmm. This takes a few minutes. So while it goes, I'm gonna show you what our classic feature does. And this is where um, our, the bulk of our use happens today. If you already have content like a narration and you wanna use that, you can. Again, if you already have a script, you can. But we sort of take this teach a person to fish model and so what we've learned is you know if you think about it most people don't even realize that not all videos are alike you know there's a big difference if i'm making an ad versus being a thought leadership versus just telling a story right and so again to chris's point on clever prompting all of this affects under the hood how the video is generated so today i'll just do a we'll just do a fun educational video um Chris, you, you already gave me surfing. Is there is there another uh, is there another thing we might want to do a video about? Another activity, hobby, business, something? You got something for me? How about photography? It was, yeah, exploring exploring an art warehouse, a warehouse full of art or something like that. I don't know. Um, how about learning about appreciating art? Sure. So maybe you're the MoMA and you want to make an ad on TikTok explaining to young people why they should learn how to appreciate art, right? Um, and so it's there, there you go. There's an in the world. Uh, so, so we can use this. I'm going to leave it alone. But here I'll also show you the, the voice part. So I can choose to record this myself. So I can do the in a world where colors dance on canvas. But nobody really wants to hear me do that. So instead, I'm going to go do again one of the AI voices. But for this one, I'll actually choose my cloned voice, and we'll do a little preview. So I I recorded myself earlier than this. Uh, if you saw in the interface, there's just a little checkbox you check to say record my voice. Um, by the way, everything I'm showing you is also in our free product here. So if you want to try it and you're nervous, it's free. Please use it. We'd love your feedback. Um, in a world where colors dance on canvas and sculptures whisper untold stories. We embark on a journey to uncover the secrets of the art realm. Hmm. What, is it, what do you think? How, how close to me was that? I mean, close enough that if, if some, yeah, very close. All right. So let's go. And now we can decide, are we doing this example again on TikTok or is this for YouTube? You can always change this later, but it does help to orient it from the beginning. Uh, the last thing here is, as I mentioned, so our partnership with Getty includes over 60 million clips of both uh, stock uh, visuals as well as stock imagery. But if you're making like a fun video for your friends or something and you want to use memes or internet content, you can use that too. You can also decide you're only going to use your own content. Our vision of things Which is, is what most we people do. have. Yeah. yeah. Most people have some content they need. Very few have all of what they need. So by having the stock in there, you know, that way if you're, you know, if Chris is going to do a video, like next time I'm in New York City and he wants to have the Brooklyn Bridge go by, he doesn't have to fly to New York City to take that clip himself. He can just use one of those. Um, so here we go. I will say, if you're going to try the product, by the way, right now, and this will change in about eight weeks, once you hit go from here, you won't be able to re-edit the audio. So you won't be able to cut a word out. You won't be able to change the script. Uh, that's coming very, very soon. But right now, as of this moment, when I hit go, it's sort of locked in digital stone per se. So we always recommend to give that a listen. 
So here's what our product's doing. Again, I said, we turn your words into videos. So we listen to the audio, we create a transcript from that. We then actually use AI to determine the cadence of the speaker's voice, because what we want to do is do natural shot breakup. So if you've ever seen any form of timeline in any video editing tool, there's always a, a storyboard effectively. The last thing we do, and you saw it just finished, is for each slot in that storyboard, we look at the words that were being said, and we match that up to content from the Getty Stock Library. If you have your own content over the next few weeks, you'll see that it will actually, instead of pulling from Getty, we'll actually pull from your own library. Ooh, um, I want that. Yeah, so yeah. I'll actually show you that in advance. So um, this is oh, a clip I, I uploaded. That. that would make this it fun... so much more valuable for me. I want to load up all my assets into that. Well, so in this case, I picked, um, <laughs> this is silly, but it was really good for demo purposes. I uploaded a clip from the movie, The Fast and the Furious. Um, but like pretend you're trying to assemble from your hours and hours of content. And you know, you've got this one great car chase sequence somewhere in there. What we do is we use computer vision combined with natural language search so that you can huh. find clips plus or minus three seconds of whatever you're looking for. If I want an explosion, I can go find an explosion. And that's and search the clip. only in the clip in your library and it's finding the timestamp? Yep. Oh my God. Oh, but you can do more than that. You can grab the clip. You can decide you want the six second version of it and hit save and it adds it into your augie library for all the wow. rest wow does it have so eyes that's... and ears or only eyes pardon me does it have eyes and ears or only eyes uh today it's eyes uh, about three weeks it'll have ears too and then I we're going to also support if it's searchable only based on the images or if it can also search the audio content as well it's going to search the audio content. We're also going to allow you to search by sound effects if you want to find like a dog barking or a gunshot or something like that. Um, so moving into it, so this is what we call our rough cut report. And what we show you is A, what we made, B, if you were a novice Premiere user, how roughly long it might have taken you to do this manually based on actual user or real world data. But the last thing we do, again, for everybody who's experimented with AI and you've ever seen a couple of extra thumbs, we actually want to bring it to the surface. Like, we don't think this is perfect. We're very transparent uh, for two reasons. One is the AI is never going to be perfect, but and I mean that. But two, we want you to have your own flair on this. So even if you're just making an ad for your business, your business and my business are different. Your video and my video shouldn't be the same. So no matter what we do, we still want to represent what the individual, whether that's a brand, and a person, a company, what, whatever might need. So this is our rough cut. Our mileage may vary. But let's take a look at what we have. In a world where colors dance on canvas and sculptures whisper untold stories, we embark on a journey to uncover the secrets of the art realm. Brush strokes speak volumes, and every stroke tells a tale waiting to be discovered. Dive. Okay, so I'm not going to finish the whole thing, but as you can see, it definitely got the gist of it. Now, I might come along and say, well, I got the gist, but this isn't actually what I want. So I'm going to go right back to the beginning here. And I do love this canvas colors thing, but I actually wanted colors on canvas. So there's a, there's colors on canvas. I think that's a little bit more fun. Um, and what happened is it used the words to give a prompt to, to Getty to uh -huh. get clips. So if I instead want to say um, blank canvas, for example, and see what we get, uh -huh. we'll get some, right? So look at that. And you can always change this. Remember, I said before, you want memes, click on animated GIF, and let me tell you, you're going to get memes. Um, I'm using the premium catalog here. We also have a, a free stock catalog as well. Um, so there we go. We have a brushstroke. Now, in this part, as I recall, I said something about statues whispering untold stories. So I, as much as I like the, the, the trumpeter, I'm going to say statues. And sure enough, we're going to get a couple of different, you know, whatever they might have out there. But we want to be a museum. So let's, there we go. Everybody likes a good uh, good thinker. And then lastly, this embark on a journey. I don't know if the maze was I wanted. I want, um, I'm no, just going to put like in the stock. word journey. What's that? Yeah, the maze is, that one is stock, stock photography. Let's grab a different one. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and it even looks very stock. But, you yeah. know, maybe, in fact, I'm going to say museum. And go put in someone coming into a museum. Cool. Right now, I could also decide I'm going to use my own content. So you saw before, here's my explosion. Right. And I was helping my friend out who has a nonprofit law law group. And so here's her logo. So 
You can put in anything of your own. You can upload from your hard drive. You can upload from Dropbox and you can even paste by URL. Mm -hmm. uh, so we really, really don't want this to be, hey, it's a lot of stock video stapled all together. It's just more you can use stock to supplement whatever you have. Awesome. Anyhow, I want to get to uh, to finish this up. So show a couple last things. You can you can add different visual effects. They probably don't do too much on the statue. Um, we have built in background music, over 6,000 clips, all again, full licensing rights. So I can preview them all, adjust the volume, all sorts of things. We have automatic closed captioning and subtitling. And we've even built, you know, as many sort of TikTok style effects uh, because, you know, that they work well with 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 consumers. So Here's uh here's what we call our, our keyword effect. And I'm gonna just do uh make this a little funky for us. And there we go. And so now we've spent, you know, our two minutes on it. The world where colors dance on canvas and sculptures whisper untold stories. We embark on a journey to uncover the secrets of the art realm. Brush strokes speak volumes. And you can see where we could take this and finish it all up. But that's yeah. the that's the the big core of our product. And hopefully just a few minutes, if you need to promote something yourself, your business, or again, just tell a good story, you can do it in just a few minutes. Yeah, that's awesome. I, thank you for joining us. I know you're on a bit of a, a time crunch. Kristen, I'm even thinking like, it'd be fun to make little music videos, like where you first generate a bunch of images in mid journey that are aligned with your theme. And then you bring in, you know, 15 storyboarded images with song and they'll like, kind of come bring some clips together. It kind of could be low, low budget uh, threads content or something like that, you know? Jeremy, I'm going I'm I'm to be in touch with you. I'm in Brooklyn awesome. as well. Here's our uh, here's here's our gecko surfing in lava on Mars. Let's let's cross our fingers and see what the AI did. In the fiery heart of Mars, a mesmerizing sight unfolds. Geckos, with their <laughs> tiny grips and vibrant scales, ride the molten waves with grace and daring. The red lava, a sea of raw power, becomes their playground, a dance with destiny. Their tails flick in perfect balance, a testament to agility in the face of adversity. With each crest and fall, they embody resilience and freedom a symbol of conquering the impossible. And as they surf the fiery tides of the unknown, we witness a spectacle that defies expectation and inspires wonder. So one thing I will say, we're still working on our prompt continuity. It is a, it is a challenge, but you can even see here, close up on the faces of young creatures, right? So now I would come back in and say, actually it should have said geckos and hit generate. That'll take another minute or so, so I won't waste your time. Um, but- uh, A lot of ways, I'll... it's really actually useful for us to see how you would uh, change that. That was good, thank you, even though it was a quick one there. That's awesome. too funny. With their tiny little sticky fingers and the <laughs> colorful skin. I'll finish up that video, um, uh, hopefully later tonight, but probably not till uh, in a couple of days this week, and I'll drop it in the Discord, uh, in your Discord. Cool, for and I know you've got to run, but would you text Gabby the one month free code that you offered to people so they can check things out? I'm about Gabby's to put that already got it. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Jeremy, a quick question before we go. Is there any restriction on time length about the content you can create? The storyteller mode. So the generative is one minute right now. Um, we're using a very primitive model from Stable Diffusion because things like Sora don't have APIs yet. Um, but as soon as Sora or Runway or Pika or any of them have public facing APIs, our intent is to integrate all of them and increase that max length. The okay. max length of a of a standard Augie video right now is 10 minutes, and eventually that'll go up to an hour plus. Yeah. Okay, great. Great. Thanks. That's awesome. Yeah, and um, Chris has my contact info. I'm in the Discord. We're doing a webinar next week. Happy to answer any of your questions at that time. And thank you so much, Chris, for inviting me in to, to this group. I'm like, you're the kind of people I just want to spend all the time with because I know when we give you tools like this, you do things like, I mean, like gecko surfing lava. And Please the make great. sure that I have an invite to your webinar. I'll make sure that all my peeps know about it and are there. Me awesome. too, Jeremy. Yeah. Amazing work. I've been in the beta for the last year and a half and it's just insane how fast they're moving. And yeah, Jeremy, major props. Yeah. Please pass that along to the team. Thanks Great. so much, buddy. Nice to see you. All right. Have a good one, y'all. So guys, uh, thanks, Jeremy. Um, I know that we're in the middle of introductions and the uh, agenda that I shared earlier has a different agenda on it. We are just being a little bit flexible so that we can accommodate like CEO schedules and have Jeremy pop in. And so it's slightly out of order. Please bear with me. Um, I would hey, like hey, to reach. Out. Go ahead, Robert. Yeah. So Chris, let me just kind of, you know, close that out uh, and just show a couple of clips really quickly. So, yes, please. Because um, I have a good example of the different ways that we've used it, their traditional model, which I think is pretty interesting. So 
Um, we have an AI product that will go out, read the news, and then summarize content from the latest news and generate uh, a piece. And so one of the things we were looking at was California organic wines. And so we created this piece. It's all sourced from uh, reputable uh, uh, news outlets. And then we turned it into this. Hey there, wine enthusiasts. Welcome to the world of California organic wine. We're here to take you on a journey through the vineyards, wineries, and stories behind this incredible industry. California is a land of sunshine, fertile soil, and a rich winemaking history. Did you know that California is also a leader in organic wine production? That's right, folks. California produces more organic wine than any other state in the U.S. So what's the big deal about organic wine? Well, for starters, it's so very straight-laced, very kind of news-centric. Uh, then, uh, based on the artwork that we're doing, uh, we created something that's more whimsical. In the infinite fabric of the cosmos dwelled three souls. Full screen. Uh, sorry. Aria the dream weaver wandered through worlds unseen, ah, ah. her imagination painting reality across dimensions. As she slumbered, her vibrant dreams rippled through the galaxy, seeds of possibility taking root in the farthest corners of creation. Above watched the ancient eye, a silent sentinel keeping ceaseless guard over existence. Its presence was the anchor on which the balance of the universe turned, protecting the endless stories unfolding below. And in the so imagery step, that we created in this journey, and then we created used Claude to create the uh, script, and then brought that in, brought our original artwork into Augie, used their functionality to animate our static images so you saw movement within that so a little bit more creative and then we uh, subway recently launched a bunch of things and we wanted to create like kind of a little bit more of a fun thing welcome to the snack attack your quick bite to snacking with your host sammy snacks here to give you the latest buzz on subway's newest menu craze the footlong sidekicks nom 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 that's right Subway is kicking boring sandwiches to the curb and rolling out ginormous goodies like the footlong cookie, footlong churro, and footlong pretzel. We're going full Willy Wonka with these creations. I sampled that cookie first, and let me tell you, one nibble, and I was in total cookie heaven. Chocolate chips as big as my eyeballs, oozing melty sweetness with every monster bite, had milk dripping. So just really wanted to kind of show the flexibility more of a new straight, you know, straight kind of news piece, more of a creative piece, and then kind of fun bloggy uh, kind of piece. That's awesome, man. Thank you very much. And I mean, I, I think, you know, one of the, the takeaways there is like, you can start making videos without audio, video editing skills with generated photos and generated text. It's, it's really quite amazing. Thank you, Robert. Um, so before I proceed with the intros, I just want to say to those of you who haven't popped your face or audio on, no pressure to. Uh, if for some reason you're hiding out, that's no problem. But I'm, I'm just going to continue down the road, but just opt out if you need to. So, um, Sarah, do you want to go next? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Um, nice to see everybody here. Um amazing diversity of backgrounds here. Um, personally, I'm in journalism. I'm the social media manager at a news magazine based in Vancouver called The Tai. Um, and yeah, I don't know, my uh, aha moment with AI was kind of just seeing its wild rise in popularity and normalizing it as like a very everyday usable tool um, among young people, among young creatives, among people who, um, Kind of like somebody was saying earlier, I can't remember who, but uh, you know, we don't need these really extensive tools all the time to create cool stuff. You can just kind of get back to the basics. And as a social media manager, I extremely relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am using way too many tools that I'm not necessarily an expert in. So yeah, this is kind of my um, dive into it. And uh, uh, also as somebody said earlier, I'm kind of trying to embrace AI as a tool for, you know, expanding my ideas and figuring out how to approach things when, you know, I have a new idea for a new project, um, instead of being so afraid of it as like somebody who's been a writer my whole life. Um, yeah, that's me. I Thanks love that. I love GPT for my all my social media work. It's so useful. I have it build me out calendars all the time. 
like, here's the three topics I want to be talking about this month, make me a social media calendar. And then I just go through and revise it in the spirit of like Robert's, you know, zero to one concept. And then like, I'm always uh, dictating my phone and then having that turn it into written stuff. But then I take the written stuff and I'm like, in accordance with the social media calendar, you just made me take this long form blog post and create Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn content. And, and, and so it's just really giving me a huge leg up in that regard. And cool. You can Thanks do that, that GPC. Yeah. So like, it will give you like a, but it won't give you a graphic calendar. It will give you a, if you like want a script. graphic calendar, it will give you that. But I was actually referring to a text-based calendar, like just to say week one, Mondays, you post on LinkedIn about, you know, the menu. Right. Wednesdays, you post on Facebook about it. But that being said, if you're like now represent that as a diagram, it can do that as well. Goodness me. Yeah. Um, Sam. Hey, guys. Um, sorry, as Chris says, I'm hiding out today. I'm actually really under the weather. So no problem. Um, my picture is probably better than <laughs> how I feel. <laughs> I am a designer and construction home builder in Nashville, Tennessee. So I kind of had a, well, first of all, also, I just want to tell all of you how humbled and grateful I am to be in this group. Um, I just had to say that like capital letters. Um, I had a couple of AI aha moments. I go to Fast Company Innovation Festival in New York every year, and they have amazing classes and people from all over the world. And every year, every session is so different. But this last year, every single session was AI. They literally had nothing but AI and how it applies to every single kind of field that you can imagine. And I started working with a client and came across a picture on IG that was an insp 